Deus é grande. together for our alma mater, the only school in River State with a unique anthem. Put our hands together once again, Saiti. Quickly. Permit me this morning to recognize and welcome to our means the chair is Annie Amakri. Can we put our hands together for her? Please, Mrs. Beatrice Pago, your attention is needed at the podium. Please, can you come over, Mrs. Beatrice Pago? Wherever you are, please come. Your attention is needed. At the high table, the presence of the principal of Archie King Crowder Memorial Girls School in Lenin Mrs. Chiere Odu, you're welcome. 
Permit me to also recognize the presence of the wife of the former Deputy Governor of River State, Dame Christy Toby. You're welcome, Ma. Also at the high table is our own so, Dr. Helpmeet Ernest Secondus, the senior pastor of the True Vine Women International Outreach, Chairperson Werika River State, Director of Destiny Field International School of Broad Accord. You're welcome, ma'am. Also this morning, I will be recognizing the who first saw the very school we are all celebrating today. Drop is the face of this whole ceremony. And that is the only surviving pioneer student of our chicken crop, me, Toby. We are recognizing her and our students are sitting down. She is the face of this occasion. Among the students who started as Chidikin Kradam Mama here with us, she has given her word she must be here and she's going to be here as the face of the anniversary. Thank you, all old students, the pre-war students. We have Lady Usoma L. Ihera. We have Mrs. Violet Hesham, Mrs. Janet Ilepewi. We have our own Mrs. Faith Candy Salama. Permit me also to recognize the presence of Dame Dr. Chloe Bell I. Abam. You're welcome, ma'am. Also with us this morning is Professor Aigbemi Icebeam, C-O-O-N. Please put your hands together for our mommy. Our mommies are always representing us. If you look at them, you'll see a touch of green to show no matter what. All right, permit me also to recognize specially the convener of this very program today, our own national president of the Old Girls Association of Achidikin Kwada Memorial Girls School, Professor Oyaye Edgar Kunle Olou. Let's put our hands together. The woman who has made this program to come to this stage. Thank you very much, ma'am. Every other old student seated here, please permit me, because time will not permit us to introduce the true vibe of this occasion. You are welcome, ladies. We are talking about girl child, and they are well represented. Officially permit me to hear me, she may be the variable that led us with an opening prayer. Why we receive them um, all the um, dignitaries to be introduced this morning. Also in our midst, we have the representative of the Honorable Commissioner for Works River State. In person of... He has a lot of titles, so I'm confused. Should I say engineer? Okay, by the director. Mechanical Department, Engineer Wokoma, you're welcome, sir. You know, the character of the girls from ACM Jose Lilewa attracts the men around us, and that is why they were coming to the school to hunt beautiful women, intelligent women, and that is why we have them all over. Imagine the introduction. All is Professor Doctor, Professor Doctor. ACMGS, put your hands together for yourself. No one can produce what you have produced. It's proud becoming one of the pioneer and
still the students of ACM JS in Lilingwo. Honorable Commissioner for Energy, ably represented by Mrs. Ogechi Okomadu. You're welcome, Honorable Commissioner. Sir. Thank you. Also, permit me to recognize the presence of Honorable Ebisimo Brown, who is ably represented here by Mrs. Patience Brown. Ma, please, can you give a wave? So, thank you very much. That will take us on this special lecture, Health Special Services, River State Primary Healthcare Management Board. That's the lady who is going to give us the, the lecture on eight decades of girl child education and its nation building. All right, we are privileged to have in our midst this morning the Lordship, the Right Reverend Innocent Odu JP, the Bishop of Evo Diocese, the husband to our own principal, Mrs. Chiyore Odu. Daddy, you are welcome. Our own daddy is also the proprietor. Please, can you be on our version as we welcome? The pioneer student of Achiriki Crowder Memorial Girls School in Lelewa, the first of the 80th anniversary. Mrs. Keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping. This is the woman, the very first that we are celebrating today. Put your hands together for her. I am so much so bad. Thank you. to have you, ma'am. Be seated. This occasion, they are the people that will make us enjoy the lecture and get enable us get the best out of the lecture today. Onenu, who is the vice principal administration, junior secondary school. They are our panelists. Please, Please ma'am, come, come forward. forward. Please, ma'am, come this way. We have Professor Oyai. Ega Kunle Olo, who is currently serving as our provost of the College of Health Sciences at Niger Delta University in Bayesa. She is also a member of the University Governing Council. She is also one of the panelists. Is she here? Welcome, ma'am. Welcome, ma'am. 
And then the last but not the least, Mrs. Ibaniba Briggs Oti, who is currently the chief executive of Rosabella Consoles Limited. Please welcome, ma'am. Quickly permit me to recognize the presence of the women wing of the clan, as to uh, Mrs. Sorry, permit me to recognize the Wawikan women. Wawikan women, oh yeah! Wawikan women, oh yeah! All right, you are welcome. Thank you very much. These are the pillars behind our mommy, Pastor Ernest Secundus. Thank you for honoring us today. Quickly, we are going into the welcome address where we expect um, the list of other dignitaries. Permit me to bring to the microphone for a welcome address for this very event. The Chairman Local Organizing Committee of the Old Girls Association of Chibiki Crowder Memorial Girls School and Lelewo, Mrs. Joyce Ominuo Ndibara. Please come face away to the microphone for a welcome address. Before she gets here, permit me to introduce myself as the MC occasion. Also with me is a co MC, our own woman, the retired. General Manager, Garden City Radio River States, Mrs. Beatrice Pagu. You can see what SMJ is producing and is still producing. We have General Manager, we have my humble self, a product of Archie King Crowder Memorial Girls School. You can see we did not hire MC. Everything that's happening here is coming from a little more because. We are, we are capable, capable in all ramifications. Currently, I'm serving as a press secretary to the Honorable Commissioner for Health, Edna Chigomeno Nenda Aleti. Put your hands together for us. ACM just will never carry last. For what? The LOC chairman is gallantly walking to the podium for her welcome address. Put your hands together once more for the LOC chairman. Fidelis in minimis. Obviously, I will just observe the order of protocol that have just been established. God, there is so much to welcome this morning. It is with great profound sense of honor and responsibility that I welcome you to this unique occasion, marking the East Great Citadel of Learning is the premier girls' secondary school east of the Niger, established by the Church Missionary Society as part of their evangelical mission to see the girl child to school beyond primary education in 1943. Reflecting on this, I feel gladdened to admit that the dreams of the Missionary Church Society has come to reality. I make bold to say that SCMGS has discussed the impact of the girl child in community development. I urge all to tighten your seatbelts as our keynote speaker takes us on this flight. It promises to be interesting. As also today, Ama Mata, and they were carefully selected because there is possible of their positive roles in the development of the girl child and women in our society. It is therefore my honor to welcome you to this lecture and to urge us to seize this opportunity to celebrate our achievements, friendship, and fulfillment. Thank you. I remain your humble servant, Mrs. Joyce Omenihun Dibara. Thank you. Can we give her a round of applause again? 
she has delivered her responsibility appropriately. Now, that opening address, the welcome address, will be followed by the chairman's Please permit our mommy to stand where she is and address us. The age is telling on us. <laughs> Thank you very much. ACMGS, Fidelis in Minimis, ACMGS. I stand on existing protocol and use this opportunity to I also welcome our highly esteemed produced gifts of life like and we want to say God is faithful to us as we mark this milestone of 80 years and enjoy this public health child education in community development also to enjoy the panel discussion that will be following closely and then to witness the honoring of our old uh, girl child for those of you who you can attest to Wednesday to start Sunday we have one program or the other in this celebration we want you to join us at one phase or the other to celebrate with us on to Sunday the Thanksgiving service. We appreciate your and to see it grow and work stronger. I also want to thank God for the students, those of you who are students now, very soon you will graduate and become old girls, even though you are eggless. We know that you will continue to follow in the footsteps of those that have gone ahead of you. So we are inspiring, asking that you be inspired to continue to walk in the way of ACMGS old girls. I want to say that this is an occasion that I would like every one of us to, as I said, relax and enjoy. And I know that we are going to be blessed. What will do better to hear from the chairman of the occasion. Before we proceed, permit me to recognize one of our own, a product of ACMGS in Lelewo, which is SRSJP. You can see where a Lelewo is going. A lot of us commissioners, wives of commissioners, wives of governors, and what have you. ACMGS, put your hands together for yourself. All right, let's have our eaglets do a presentation for us. Students, present students of... Can you encourage them by applauding them as they're coming? Impressive. Thank you, Ms. Nancy Cora. Now, over to you, Ms. Adeyi Busola. Has the girl child education been impactful in our nation today? Okay, speaking as a girl child, a girl child is one who is provided with the basic knowledge, skills, and training to contribute to national development. An educated girl child can only grow through a literate woman who has every chance of breaking the cycle of social vice. It is said that female education has an important impact on the development of a prosperous, a stable, and a healthy state of nation, which leads to active, productive, and empowered citizens. It is reduces social disparities. We say that the seeds of success of a nation are best planted by women and their mental support to educate girls is to Thank you very much, Mr. Nibusala. Now over to you, Ms. Rina Wonbasi. In what ways has the girl child been denied her rights? Okay, well, the girl child has been denied the rights in so many ways. But first, I'd like to say, nowadays we see only the men becoming presidents, becoming governors, becoming the chairman. What makes them think that we women, we can't become presidents? What makes them think that we can't rule a nation? 
they should stop denying us our rights and give us the opportunity to rule the world. Because if we can raise a home, if we can raise a generation, then what's a nation? Very well, thank you. Spoken very well, Ms. Rina Wonbasi. Now back to you, Mr. Bora Ogunleke. Can a girl child independently handle responsibilities here in Nigeria? Of course a girl child can handle responsibilities independently here in Nigeria, but you may be wondering how. It starts from the little responsibilities we perform at this younger stage, washing plates, washing clothes, cleaning the house, running errands for the, our older siblings, assisting the parents, taking care of the older ones before us here. All these responsibilities, they instill values in us that build us for the greater heights ahead of us. Now, parents also have a place, a role to play in this situation. The parents, they need to keep the girl child determined. They need to keep her passion, they need to keep her zealous. They need to try to be hardworking. And above that, they know, she may grow up to be wayward. Thank you very much. Now, to you again, Ms. Nancy Cora. Can a female effectively handle political ministerial positions here in our society? Of course, a female can effectively handle political and ministerial positions in our country. This is because in our world today, women face a number of challenges that affect their ability to participate in politics and become political leaders. However, we still find women who are striving and pursuing political positions. You can find them in the likes of Dr. Bella Edu. You can also find them in the likes of Honorable Stella Okoete. They are females who are pursuing political positions. Therefore, we as females too can handle political and ministerial positions in our country. Thank you. Thank you very much. To you again, Ms. Deborah Guleke. Do you think a female can rule Nigeria someday? Yes, a female can rule Nigeria someday. Like I mean, in Nigeria here, yeah, we have women who are performing very well in the political sector. We have the likes of Honorable Mrs. Tonya Briggs, who have worked as a special advisor and a special assistant to our former governors, to the extent of even being elected as a commercial for culture and tourism. Why? Because she was hardworking, she was efficient. A woman is a homemaker and a woman makes up the smaller units of the nation. If a woman can work as a homemaker, an economist, a budget planner, Back then, back in the home, working at 24 hours as a mother, a sister, a wife, a friend, and lots more. What stops her from stepping up and working in the political sector? I mean, women, we have the power, we have potential, we have the ability to move. So what stops us from taking that little step to becoming governors, presidents, ministers? I want to see the first female president coming from 024 said. Like, I mean, we have the ability. So women, we actually can rule Nigeria. And if a woman taking care of a home makes that impact, if she is a president, the effect will be remarkable. Exactly, it will be remarkable. Now to you, Ms. Adeyi Bosola, what should parents, teachers, society, and a nation at large do to place the girl-child education a priority? Well, it is my belief that every parent should do what it takes to make sure that the future of their girl child are worthwhile. Parents should go to large extent, extra length, to make sure that their female children receive outstanding education. Gone are the days where girls were subjected to do all forms of domestic chores and were denied their right to education. We say that a society that disdains the girl education has slowly and cogently traded its future. No nation, no society can develop without the girl child education. So why then do we deny our girl child the right to education? After I have heard, I can add Bishop Desmond Tutu once said, if you want to see the real development of a nation, of a society in any part of the world you can mention, the best the best investment is in we, is in us, the women, the girls, the females. The best investment is in us. So, girl child education is important. Girl child education is essential. It is a must in our country, in our society, in our nation. Since ignorance is our worst enemy. Lastly, I call on to all our parents, to all our teachers, to the society, to make sure that our girls receive the best education. If we want a good, sound, and moral society. Thank you very much, Zadeem. So you've spoken extremely well. Now to you, lastly, Ms. Rina Wonbasi, what is your advice to people who still do not see the value of the girl-child education? 
Okay, my advice to those who don't see the value of the girl child education is that they need to start seeing it, they need to look into it. Because nowadays, it's mainly the women that are making waves. I want to use this public figure as an example. She's well known around the world, Mrs. Ngozi Okonjiwale. Whenever her name is mentioned, it's mentioned with respect. We women, we are figures, we are public figures. Let's bring this down to us. The principal of Ashton Kinkada Memorial Girls School, Mrs. Chinyere Otu, she is the one heading such a great institution. I say that if we women, we are given the chance, we are given the opportunity to show forth our talent, show forth our skills, show forth our knowledge to the world, I know, I strongly know that the nation is going to be great. We're going to lead the nation into to greater heights. If we women, we are given the chance to become those doctors, those engineers, those contractors that the men are becoming nowadays, what stops the society from becoming great? Lastly, I want, to, I want you to remember that you're not just girls, but you are public figures. Thank you. Thank you very much. The Girl Child One Indicator contributes a great deal to the development of our nation, society, and country. And just like that, you have it all. You've had it all. Once again, we, my name is Amara Chris Sophia, and we're the girls of the Ashley King Carter Memorial Girls School. God bless you. Don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go. Can we see something in these children? I'm already seeing a journalist here. I'm already seeing the Speaker of House of Rev here. I'm already seeing the Senate President here. I'm already seeing the First Lady of the State here. What can you say? S-E-M-G-S. Thank you, our own children. Indeed, S-E-M-G-S is a place to groom the girl child. Put your hands together as they make their way to their seats. God bless you. She said, if a woman can build the world, why can't a woman rule a nation? No, what is the answer to that? It, the, the answer is, is, is on that phone. It's unbeatable. If we can produce who is the president of the country, why can't we rule the country? We can and that day we come, and the first female president of this Nigeria will come from ACM just a little while. Because we have produced the wife of the vice president of this country. So we are getting there, producing the president of Nigeria. Yes, it's a, it's a noble uh, prayer. All right, let's clap for them as they make their way to the podium for a cultural display.
performance ACMGS Zobu Zobu any girl school in this protocol try us and see Zobu Zobu hey, hey. who them be we show them Pepe actually can crowd that memorial girl school finally it's a minimum Why they are taking their position? Permit me, for the interest of our guests, to let us know that the school anthem we sang earlier was composed by an old girl of ACMGS. That is the wife of one time vice president of Nigeria. Alex Ekwemi, his dear wife, Lady Beatrice Ekwemi, was the lady who composed the ACMGS anthem that we are singing today. Is that not wonderful? That everything about us is produced by us. That's a great one. Please put your hands together for ACMGS.
they deserve better applause than this when i mean better applause i mean it from the bottom of my heart because what we are seeing it has gone through different processes that we can see what is displayed here these are the things ACMGS is known for quickly we are going to take the citation may I step out of the usual thing we are doing here and do something please put you your hands together when, for her you know when in the local language and the common preaching we say she know they fall our hand she know they fall our hand you can imagine if people like her have not been committed to this good work and had kept a little more girls going to the extent what you saw today you see is proof of the efforts being made by her and the management of that school I want you to give her a standing ovation. Rise up and clap for this woman. Her faithfulness to her duty yes. is what has kept all girls proud that this is our school. Thank you, ma'am. School. Yes, the legacy of OCM just still lives and it will continue to live generation to generation we're going straight to the citation of our own guest lecturer today our own guest lecturer dr nesochi odo while she remains standing mrs pago is going to read her citation please can you project that citation for me can we have it on the screen so everybody can see? Our doctor, medical practitioner, with over 40 years where she had worked in various capacities. She was the pioneer operations manager of the River State Free Medical Care Program from 2021 to 2011. Pioneer director of medical services, River State Primary Health Care Management Board from 2011 to 2013 and Permanent Secretary Free Medical Care Program from 2013 to 2015 when she retired from the civil service. Currently, she's working on contracts with the Primary Health Care Management Board as the head of Special Services Unit. She hails from Ndoni in Oba, Ibema, Ndoni local government area of River State and is a strong member of a from Ndani, whose main aim is the education and empowerment of young girls from that area. She is a live member of the Medical Women's Association Nigeria, MWAN, which she is very passionate about and has held positions at state and as well as being M. WAN mentor for the 2019 to 2021 Biennium. She has served as committees, she has served on committees of Medical Women's International Association, that's MWIA, over the years. Doctor of Force in initiating the MWAN 7 scheme several years ago to encourage members to cultivate the habit of saving. This is a scheme which she still coordinates and of which members have benefited. She has been happily married for 42 years and has four sons and a lovely grandson. Make welcome our guest speaker for today, Ms. Doctor of Welcome. Yes. see. Please display the lecture. Dignitaries here present. 
permit me to stand on the already established protocol. It is indeed an honor for me to be standing here before you, even though I'm not an old girl of the Archdeacon Crowther Memorial um, School, I too went to a mission school, which I'm proud to say is one year older than your school, and that is Queen of the Rosary College, Onitsha. And I find that the sky is not the limit, it's just the beginning. I'll be speaking to you today on the impact of girl-child education on the development of the community, if they will kindly project it. Next slide, please. Now, my outline will include introduction and definitions who is the girl child? The impact of girl child education in the community, ongoing efforts on girl child information, the way forward, and my conclusion. And I hope we will go home with some message. Next slide, please. Now, what is education? It's a fundamental human right. And as Article 26 of the Declaration of Human Rights of 1979 states, education is the right of everyone. And everyone includes the girl child. Irrespective of our gender, our race, our ethnicity, it is our right. And take note, it should be free at elementary level. Next slide, please. Now, education is divided into three parts. We have formal education, we have non-formal education, and we have informal education. Next slide. It takes place in a school setting, and it results in development, entire development of the person. And that the informal education is education that we obtain not necessarily in a formal setting, but we learn it through skills from programs and other activities. It's mainly practical in nature. And usually, it's not evaluated, and we do not get certification for it. Next slide. Informal education, on the other hand, is what we learn from day to day, it's a life environment. We learn it at home, at work, go to a formal setting to learn it. We learn how to interact with one another, and that is from our environment. Next slide. And it's a universal call to action. Each goal has the achievement of gender equality and empowerment of girls and women as an integral part. However, some of them are more specific. Next, Next slide. Some, some of the specific, specific ones are goal four, which, which talks about equitable quality education. Next, Next slide. Goal, goal five, five talks about gender equality. And, and that's part, part of what we're going to be discussing. Gender, gender you educate, educate a boy, you're, you're ed educating, educating an individual. But, but when, when you educate a girl, you educate a community. A community. Next, Next slide. We, we also, also have goal 11, 11 which, which talks about the development of sustainable cities and communities. Since, Since we're, we're talking, talking on community, community development, development, that is, is also one, one of the sustainable, sustainable development, development goals that, that services. Services, services it's, it's a, a process where community, community members, members come, come together to, to take collective action, and, and it generates solutions to problems. Invited with those of government, government. they assist government to provide things that national development and progress. progress. Told earlier by the young ladies that spoke to us, it is a female child from birth to 18 years. What is she? She's a nurturer. 
It's, it's a, a natural instinct. You see a little girl holding her doll. She's, she's already learning how to nurture and take care. It's of value that she is... Uh, 2011, the United Nations adopted October 11th as the International Day of the Girl Child. And this is because they, they wanted everyone to recognize the unique challenges that are faced by the girl child. Next slide. Now, these are some of the statistics. You can see that 121 million children are out of school globally. And out of this 121 million, 65 million of them are girls. And over 80% of these girls are in sub-Saharan Africa. And Nigeria is part of sub-Saharan Africa. Less than 50% of countries in the world have achieved gender parity in primary education, 42% in lower secondary, and 24% in upper secondary. So you see, the higher you go, the fewer we are. Next slide. One out of three adolescent girls out of three. And women account for two thirds of all the adults in the world that are unable to read. Next slide. In Nigeria, even though our statistics are questionable, we have about 7.6 million girls out of school. Of these, 3.9 million in primary school and 3.7 million in junior secondary level. And there is such a high dropout rate. About one million girls drop out of school between year one in primary till they get to uh, the last year of primary school, secondary school. So you can see that the dropout rate is very high. This is just to tell you that investing in girls is the right and smart thing to do. And it has been found they get basic training in reading it will go a long way to promote our statistics. They will have better. So what does educating a girl child do? We train her mind, her school. At the end, her earnings will be increased and thereby the prosperity of her community. It enables her to make her own decisions for her family and herself and take them in the positive direction. Next slide. It reduces child mortality. It reduces maternal mortality. We wonder why. And that's because with education, she has more knowledge about health. She knows what to do and what not to do so that she improves on her life and the life of her children. And it empowers her to contribute to the development of her community. What are the advantages of training a girl child? She will help with education of her siblings, of her peers, of those around her, because she wants to share her knowledge. You know, females have this desire to share, and, and then she can earn. And it will enable her to mount, uh, surmount challenges Supposing you have a lady that loses her spouse, if she's educated, she's still able to take care of herself and her children. She doesn't find herself because she has that confidence. Next slide. Like I've stated earlier, she will help to build her community. Next slide. Poverty. Also, we have a lot of cultural norms and practices, such as early child marriage, female genital mutilation, the feeling that girls should not go to school, they should stay at home and learn how to cook, how to farm, how to clean. We also have religious barriers. In some parts of the country, we, we know, know that, that um, Female, female education, education is, is discouraged. discouraged. They, they don't, don't go out. out. They're, They're supposed, supposed to stay in, in an enclosed. Discrimination in the sense that we feel 
What's the point of a girl going to school? After all, she's going to get married and have her own family. Why should we spend all that money to give her to somebody else? In our country now, we're suffering a lot from insecurity. We keep hearing of girls being kidnapped from schools. I believe there's just the latest one in Zamfara State. They are talking of girls that have been kidnapped. We all know about the case of the Chibok girls. Up till now, they brought us to school. We have gender, gender to gender. We, we also have, have the cases of where schools are very far from, from the community. community. It discourages uh, people from sending their daughters to school. And we also have disability. That's why everybody is being encouraged now to make uh, schools very conducive for those with disabilities. Next slide. In Nigeria, the um, framework for child protection, which is the child protection right, out of the 36 states in Nigeria, only 23 have adopted it. And out of these 23, implementation is very poor. Now, these are the rights that make it possible for people to stand on their ground and say, this is my right. Education is my right. But where it hasn't been implemented, how do you do that? We also have the case of certain, like I've said, religious uh, bodies wanting their children taught they are female children, children taught, taught by, by female, female teachers. teachers. There, there has been, been very training of more of these. these. Next, Next slide. In, In order, order to, to overcome, overcome these barriers, barriers, we have to find different means. By prioritizing girl education as a strategy, we need to see how we can do this. We need to encourage protection methods that will prove gender violence, we, we need, need to find ways and means of overcoming our harmful practices. practices. We, we need to find ways of overcoming the child uh, marriages, marriages which still exist in many areas of Nigeria. Nigeria. We also have to encourage more young ladies to learn science. You know, like I've said, we have some cultural and gender biases. We feel that, no, science is not for girls. But we need to encourage them to do courses in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So that we will have more female engineers, more female astronauts, more female doctors. We also need to, in the education, I'm happy that the um, Commissioner for Education's representative is here. In our um, learning materials, we need to try and remove some of these stereotypes. Girls, cooking, science background, and yet we go somewhere, we're introduced as chief and doctor of four, Automatically, Automatically, my, my husband, husband becomes, becomes the doctor. doctor. He, he becomes the doctor. doctor. And they, they keep, keep referring to him as doctor. Meanwhile, he has no background whatsoever. So we need to try and remove all these genders. This is something. We're still talking about barriers. Next slide. Now, how does the girl-child education, what is its relationship with community? Is the level of its peoples? Peoples include the females. So for us to be able to advance in our community development, we need to ensure the education of forms communities, which will productivity, because a girl child always wants to see how can I improve on what is already in existence. She's not satisfied. Now, the girl child develops into a woman. And these 
And as they organize themselves in groups, they identify the needs of their community. They know where it's pinching. Where is it hurting us? And they find a way of spreading the word. Is it that we don't have a maternity in our area? They know and identify exactly what is needed. Next slide. And as a result of this, they embark on many programs. You know, people laugh a lot about uh, Igbo women and their August meeting. But the truth is that when they go for those meetings, they identify problems and they work on projects to better their communities. Apart from all the fanfare of their rappers and all, they do a lot to develop their communities. And as mothers, we play a critical role in the education and socialization of our children. Next slide. So how can the girl child impact on community development? She will increase participation in the formal labor market. That is, the more females we have educated, the better the labor market, the bigger the labor market, because the numbers will be more, just not limited to men. We now have women as well. Economic growth increases. And also, when you have, are going to school, nobody is going to say, mm, okay, I think we need to marry you off. Eh? You're not doing anything anymore at home. Let's marry you off. Because you're in school. Next slide. Like I had said, they have more information on nutrition, on health, and all that, and all these um, rates that we are worried about, child mortality, maternal mortality, they all reduce. And then the more education results from some of the practices that are still being perpetrated. Next slide. Now, we are going to look at some ongoing efforts by some leading women advocates. Next slide. She as 11 years old, she went to a press conference to demand that the Taliban stop girl, uh, should desist from stopping girls from having education. And that was why at the age of 15, she has received the Nobel Peace Prize. She received it at the age of 17. She's just 26 now. And she said, I don't want to be thought of as the girl who was shot by the Taliban, but the girl who fought for education. This is the cause to which I want to devote my life because she knew the importance of having education. Next slide. We have Grasha Marshall, who, well, I think she's best known for being Nelson Mandela's wife. But she's been a lifelong champion of girls' education and children's rights. She founded a, she founded a, a trust which, which raises, raises awareness about early child marriage and, and, and female, female genital mutilation and other practices that negatively impact on girls, limiting their full potential. Next slide. We have Mzule Lambo Nkuka. She was actually the first female uh, vice president in South Africa, and she's also executive director of United Nations Women a champion of girl education and child's rights. And she said recently, we're still a long way from achieving equality between men and women, boys and girls. So we still have a lot of work to do. She also has a foundation which focuses Johnson Sheriff, former president of Liberia. We are looking forward to the day we have our own female president in Nigeria. You see, she enacted a long-term education sector plan that emphasizes the expansion and quality of preschool and primary education. Remember, the implemented in Liberia. She says it's unacceptable that 30 million girls in Africa are denied their basic human right to quality education. Ensuring that every child goes to school, stays in school, 
and learn something, something of value will require firm commitments and action by governments and invest in education and prioritize the education of girls. Next slide. We also have Anne Cotton, a founder of an organization called CampFed. She received the 2014 World Innovation Summit for Education Prize. And she says, there's a feeling of zygest. That means the spirit is moving. The spirit for the girl child is moving. A global awareness around this issue need to key in. Next slide. Need to be educated in the same way that boys need to be educated. Next slide. We have a young lady, Gloria Ayodeji, who is an advocate for girl education. She's 21 years old and in her fourth year in the University of Ibado. And even though she grew up in a home where her parents were not educated, they encouraged her to have education. And during the COVID-19 pandemic, she used some uh, material produced by UNESCO, which is known as Keeping Girls in the Picture, to advocate girls not to drop out of school. Because you know the COVID-19 pandemic caused a lot of setback. And she encouraged them not to um, drop out. She started an initiative to connect them to mentors, if they were interested, to enhance their skills. Next slide. Know and are proud of who promotes the need for girl-child education and female empowerment through her writing. There are also other African writers that do the same. And she uses her work to inspire women in breaking gender constructions, stereotypes, and sexualities that have been made to subjugate women in society by the things I... Next, Next slide. slide. Education connects girls with the people and activities that build their skills and empower them to lead change. With an education, girls know their rights and stand up for it. Next slide. What's the way forward? We need to be strategic. We need to advocate and engage policymakers and key stakeholders. We need to make our needs known. We don't have to be quiet about them. I'll give you an instance. When I started um, working on contract in the Primary Healthcare Management Board, there was only one female director. When vacancies were coming, I now said to the chief executive, we need more females to hold leadership positions in management in this establishment. It was taken aback. Because you see, they feel that men are taking care of the family. So they need it more than the women. But I'm proud to say that today, out of the eight directors, there are now three rather than one. And so we keep on adship trusts. Maybe that's something you can look into. Identify some girls that are from a lower income uh, home and see how you can sponsor them to go to school. I belong to an aside girls that have dropped out of school or unable to go to school, most of them because they've had um, children in their teenage years. And for those that wanted to go back to school, we found a means of giving them some assistance. And for those that wanted to learn skills, we made sure that they were enrolled in skills acquisition programs. And we need to collaborate with female changers and influencers. We know that there are some women that advocate and fight for women. So we need to engage with them because that will help us to move forward. Next slide. The first thing you need to do is to know how, how many girls are out of school. Even if it's just to identify in Port Harcourt. Let's try and some of them may feel embarrassed. They feel they're... They've, you know, they are too old to start, but we make sure that we find ways of encouraging them. We need to recruit more female teachers and find ways of retaining, retaining girls in school. Like I had stated earlier, the dropout rate is very high. 
If we empower a girl child, we empower the community. Teaching a girl is ultimately to teach a family. The future is female. Investment in the girl child is pivotal to attainment of the sustainable development goals. Next slide. So in conclusion, let's go home with this message. Education of the girl child is an essential part of community development. Girls everywhere should have access to education. A safe environment should be ensured. I will repeat what the young lady said earlier. If we're going to see rural development in the world, then our best investment is in women. Next slide. These are my references. Next slide. I will leave you with this poem written by a young Nigerian girl, and it states, a future for the girl child. No, oh, go back. Start her up with school, she'll end up in tower and power. Give them to teachers, they'll show them light and right. Let her go to school, she'll come home lawyer and engineer. Give her education, she will bring you honor and favor. Start up in the streets, she'll end up in shame and blame. Give her to husband, give her hawking tree, she'll sell you vials and lies. On that note, I'll say thank you for listening. Can we appreciate her more? Appreciate her more. This is an explicit lecture. Very detailed lecture about the development of the girl child in our society. And that is why you and I are who we are today. Because we have been developed. We can stand anywhere in the society and match with the boy child, no matter the challenge. Put your hands together again for the guest lecturer. We're going into the, if you look at the program with you, uh, we're going to move the panel discussion down and take the investiture of ambassadors for girl child education first before that. But before we do that, we're going to give a special gift, a presentation to appreciate what Dr. Nesochi offer. I, I was glad to hear her say, that by virtue of she being a doctor, her husband automatically became a doctor. That is women transforming men. Women, put your hands together for yourself. All right, so to present this flag to our guest lecturer, Mommy, it's our honor to call you up again to receive this um, appreciation from ACMGS, the little one old girls. Morning. It is an appreciation because she did a lot of research from the lecture notes you saw on the screen. She did a lot of research to come up with this idea, all these points on how we can develop a girl child. Over to you, mommy. Thank you very much. I am sure that all of us have had a full food feeding from all the we need to know about the girl child. I think I'm speaking the mind of everybody. When I say that child, academically, physically, uh, spiritually, what she needs to give to the society when you train 
a, a girl child, you are training the whole nation. On behalf of the old girls. All right, before I call on the ambassadors for girl child education to receive the award this afternoon, permit me to recognize the old boys association of Government Technical College, Port Harcourt, the famous GTC. GTC old boys, please, can you wave for us? That's it. All right. Also in our midst, secondary school room Okuta. Please feel free to bring to thank you. Write the first Okay, permit me to introduce to us the Education Board of the Evo Diocese. Bless you for being with us. Thank you. All right, the first on the list this afternoon, I guess when the answer in the afternoon is Monsa, in the evening is Monsa. So it's not out of place if we we'll say good morning, everybody, while we're in the afternoon. All right. Okay, to present this um, investiture to our chosen ones this afternoon, permit me to, to make this presentation. <laughs> Mommy, we are going to stress you a little. You are retired but not tired. The gallant old girl of ACMGS in Lelewo, the woman representing the school with the green upon their principal, the indefactible principal of ACMGS and one the amiable woman to our old students, Miss um, Recognition from our mommy, Professor Aibemi Spiff, on behalf of old girls of ACMGS and We also have Chief Honorable a busy somebody. Please, madam, can you come forward to receive this on behalf of Indiomo Brown? Why this is good? University of Joss Alumni Association, please give a wave. We love you, we love you, we love you for coming all the way. All right, next in my list this morning is our own mommy, the wife of the former deputy governor of River State, Sir GTG Toby, then Dr. Christy Adata Toby. A wonderful woman that has really impacted in girl child. She has done tremendous things. In fact, her love for ACMGS actually came brown. Knew that for actually came to be inside it. Mommy in spirit is a member of ACMGS a little while. Thank you very much, ma'am. She has produced one time Commissioner for Information and Real Estate, Ibim Seminary. Mommy gave to the society channel for information and communication. She did a lot. She learned her voice to as many activities that has to do with the girl child. Until date, she's a support into that program. We are honored this afternoon to have yes. all right. We don't go now. <laughs> She's one of our ambassadors. 
the special moment our national um, president, professor versus professor, junior professor to professor emeritus. SMGS, you are wonderful. Producing timber and calibers. That is great. That is great. That is great. All right, mommy, we love you. May God continue to keep you stronger and stronger for all. We're going to call up an assignment to do. Mommy, don't go. Yes. Well, she should go. But there's a special one, ma. All right, so we're going to call um, a woman who has dropped She has blessed the life of children who are fatherless, who are motherless their head, giving them hope for tomorrow. Who are we talking about? We're talking about a daughter, a sister, a mother, an advocate, a mentor, a pastor, to crown it all. Our own dear pastor, Dr. Mrs. Helpmeet, Emma Secondus. You can see why the women are here in their uniform. Because she has impacted in their life. Girl, child, and widows in our society. Very beautiful woman. Black is beauty. Undiluted color. Thank you for not tampering with your color. And I believe this was what charmed daddy to come run after you. Our mama be this Our mama be this Our mama be our mama be this oh one and not push them on his people with joy in their hearts they are here to celebrate with mommy secondos it's good to be good and it's good to impact give out to the society don't keep to yourself if you are rich and people are around you oh, this tells us all the story is very clear that mommy secondus is rich in spirit she's rich in her heart of giving and what have you she's a nice woman everly I believe if daddy believes in reincarnation, in his next world, he will marry you. Yeah. All right, quickly permit me to also call on Mrs. Tonya Briggs Onide. Mrs. Tonya Briggs Onide is one of our ambassadors who is going to receive this special. But anything that has to do with God, Mama, be governor. Mama, be everything. We are honoring our own. Thank you very much. Support us as usual. All right. Lastly, we have our also lend her voice for anything that has to do with girl child. With full passion, noble lady. Look at her step. Look at her step. This is to tell you that when she was my age, man. All right. Please, a respectful wife, obedient wife, intelligent wife, super woman. And uh, my eyes see this opportunity to tell the congregation. This is my baby. She's my baby. She's my baby. My baby sister. <laughs> All right. He's my my. 
we have the face of this anniversary we are celebrating. The one we are at Chidikin Krada Memorial Girls School in Lilongwa was established in 1943. And she's right here with us. Our own mommy, Mrs. Letis Soba Pepe. The woman we are celebrating today, if I were you, I will be on my feet because on October 4th, 2023, she clocked 97 years. Which means she was 17 years of age when she got into ACM JSA Little One. Us. She did her nursing work across the globe, not just in Nigeria. She went far. Different African countries. And to the way that had been alive today is by the special grace of God. A rare one. She was face to face with bullets of different kinds. She treated the soldiers, she treated the you know Nigerians who were wounded everywhere the soldiers were nursed. Year old woman talking. <laughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I want to, this very over happy to see this day. I don't know what to say, but I thank the organizers of this anniversary. I thank the principal of the school of of ACMGS school. I thank all those who contributed to make this occasion a success. God bless all of you. Amen. I know that old man. When I was about six years old, my parents took me to church, Sensi Prince Church. And while the man was preaching, Los Angeles, <laughs> he's in Los Angeles when he is he still my parents, my maternal grandmother and grandfather were taken to them. So occasionally, my mother was agitating in St. Cyprus and parents. And so when she comes home, she'll give us. I knew of him. Uh, he was a grand old man. Thank you very much for this occasion. I am also celebrating, seize the opportunity to celebrate my 97th birthday because my... <laughs> Happy birthday to you. May God bless all of you. Okay. Okay. Thank you very yes. much. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm also very happy to associate with my senior <laughs> in the nursing profession. Myself. Your name? My, okay. I am noble lady. Uzoma Lilian Uhiara from Omaha, Abia State. Okay. Yes, but, uh, we trained at the Lagos University Hospital. And so we, we were registered overseas. That is back. Give my love to um, Messi Oluwa. Okay. I hear she's Yes. I think she's. I don't think she's still living. Thank you very much. If you want to get to 80, 90, and 97, hey, keep clapping, you know. All right. It's, it's my honor to bring to the cake stand. It's my honor to bring to the cake stand the only surviving pioneer students of ACMGS. I'm only Letish and Professor Steve. There, please. We don't want to stress you much. In the court, the anniversary cake, the first 
face of the anniversary cake because it's her face it's her occasion she is that has the story to tell about acmgs from beginning till date i remember her calling mentioning clock house and i know a lot of us don't know what clock house is in acmgs where it was it work house before you we we count from one to eight to represent the eight the mommy we cut the cake alongside the people around her this afternoon please can we say one two three Congratulations, mommy. Quickly, please, the national executive, please, quickly, a group photograph with mommy for record purpose. Thereafter, the the BOT, please. It's not balanced. Mommy, can you go this way? This way. Yeah, go this way, it's not balanced. Don't be stay there, stay there, yeah. Okay. National officers, please come and take your group photograph with them. National officers. So, the people have taken their own. First of all, please, can you quickly make your way to take a photograph? Please. So we call on a professor. Are you baby? Spread yet by the cake. So I could say we all start we sing. There is no eight or this thing. We are walking in the light. Walking in the light. We are walking in ah, I just see a walking walk in the lights. There is no walking in the lights. We are walking in the lights of God. Oh, we are walking together. Oh, oh we are walking together. Oh, la 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 la. Clap, 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 clap. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Oh, please. Bye. Okay. Photo. Oh, yeah. Quickly, let's take that shot. To the discussion proper, a lecture has been given. We're going to profile solutions what are the strategies the innovations that can be brought to table that will improve the of a nation a girl child investing in a girl Turn over to our able like i said earlier they will make us 
understand and retain more how these lectures was delivered to us. So please, they will be handling, highlighting some factors that facilitate discussing how alumni can contribute to us improving school enrollment for girls. And they will also be discussing funding There. Please bring us three chairs just in front of you. Just leave three chairs. Please, I want to plead with us. Blasi in the house, can you please, can you please excuse us? You can wait outside and do your business after now. If you go and do that outside, please, please, if you're here for your business, for photograph, please, can you do that outside? Whoever you snap will meet you there and pick her picture, please. Thank you for your cooperation. Our panelists, Kunle Olubu is here. Where is Mrs. Briggs? Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, Prof is coming. All right, so please, please, this more than you did. So make it important. Our first question is to them. Hala, let's start with you, ma'am. Highlighting some facts. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much for this opportunity for finding me worthy to deliver this uh, public lecture. My lecturer, then, as I grew older, that I understood the importance. She happened to always tell us that she lost her husband at a very uh, early, a very young age after her marriage. Her children were quite very tender, but because she was educated, didn't find it easy. Of course, her friend, unfortunately, also lost her young husband early. But it wasn't that easy because that friend of hers did not have the access to education. She struggled to see her children through school, and it wasn't a very easy uh, thing to emphasize the importance of training a girl child. According to statistics, two-thirds of recent years, primary enrollment is in Nigeria. In the secondary section, we have about 40% of enrollment, and in the tertiary institution, we have about 43% and women, females in general. 40% we have are males. So according to the research, we find out that more women are in education of the girl child has been uh, underestimated there is no there is no overrating to the edge that i have pointed out here that can hinder the education of the girl child one of such factors has to do with societal norms cultures traditions religions which most times leads to early marriage a culture 
because of tradition, because the name of that child is Shitsu Baby. Of course, children will come. So it's just a case of a child taking care of another child. The government, I think, should step into this situation. The government should step into this situation and ensure that some of these customs... Permitters, please come with me on our feet as we welcome our own visit to Polochi Yesem Rike. I shall see you. Welcome, man. God bless you. Thank you very much. Situation and ensure that some of these practices are looked into and possibly abolished. It is wrong to shatter the dreams of a girl child, especially that girl child that has aspirations just because of the reason entitled to education, teenage pregnancy. And this can often, most parents we have today in our society are morally bankrupt. They do not know anything about morals. They do not know anything about, especially a girl child. The child may fall victim to people who abuse her, which in most cases leads to teenage pregnancy, and in some cases as well leads to STDs, sexually transmitted diseases. Sexual harassment is one problem as well that the girl child faces. And this is not just only in the homes. It can also be seen in schools. We hear of male teachers do the same. Fem sexual most importantly, because if it's just like the foundation of a house. If the materials used to build the house, the foundation of a house, they are inferior, the house is bound to collapse sooner or later. So parents ought to get it right from the home front. Then the society has a role to play as well. Another factor that hinders the girl child from going to school has to do with high rates of school fees. When the parents are not able to train their children, the government can help these parents out by empowering them, providing job opportunities, because it is only poverty that can make most of these parents say, oh, this girl, maybe you just think if the government steps in and empowers these parents, empowering the parents as well as subsidizing food items, subsidizing health care. I think it are educated. Another impact insecurity I mean is when the distance a girl child has to cover from her home to school is very long. She has to cover it with their children. We all know that girl so if the government can step in and build schools in different local governments, so many schools, so that a girl child does not need to cover a far distance to gain access to an educational facility, it will go a long way to promoting the girl child education. Lack of infrastructural facilities is also a problem as far as the girl child facilities. Just as we have that all children, especially the girls, have the basic knowledge of the computer and how to operate the computer. So the, government, the girl child cannot be able to gain access or have knowledge of computers and the internet. The government can also provide learning materials, can also provide exercise books, writing materials, even uniforms. So step in. The government should also step in and assist, especially schools that are run by the mission, like we have it in Archdeacon King Prada, provide standard education for half salaries. It will go a long way. We discover that most people are better. And who is to blame them? The children are, and it is not fair at all. The children are affected. If the government can step in, look into infrastructural facilities, and currently is going to be a very smooth one. Then finally, gender discrimination. In our today's society, the women have been believed that what a man can do, positions in offices, to occupy positions in politics, I think it will go a long way. It will go a long way into ensuring that girl child education brings a, a, a change or a transformation to our society. 
take the likes of Ngozi Okonjo Iwala, who is the Director General of World Trade Organization. She is not just the first female to attain that height. She is the first African to attain that height. So I think it's kudos to the girl child. Finally, as I believe in raising a child who is educationally, morally, and spiritually sound, if these three aspects are looked into and a child is trained, I believe that they Thank you very much, Mrs. Ononu is loaded, really loaded. And I hope, like I said, and advise that you take this session very serious after this gathering. We are moving over to our national president, Professor Kunle Olu, and the presidency, and uh, our elders, our most senior, the chairman, BOT, and every other person, how the alumni can. And my job is very simple. I think one of the things we're doing today is just like, let me use the word graduated from either a school, a college, or a university. But the beautiful thing about it is that you have a kind of what we call a lifelong commitment to that institution. Because one, your certificates uh, bears the name of the institution. But for ACM Jets, one of the things that I still remember very well, in that testimonial, the things is I realized that it was in the scriptures. I thought it was what uh, ACM Jets was telling me. And I took it to heart. That, eh, I am, uh, there is a uh, te uh, testimonial that is written in their hearts. So wherever you miss a life long of community like we normally we say sometimes even when they say national president when i want to post something i'm a bit worried how do i begin to address these people that <laughs> i will start with most most senior most senior senior sister because you have you come across a lot of persons that's ordinarily very important now, what can we, like you rightly said, our students are here, our younger sisters, they are here, crowd in this kind of setting. Have you ever seen this before? Fine. Because it's not 97. This one, that's the wife of the governor. You know, sometimes, honestly, if you ask my kind of opinion, I don't like that word, wife of the governor, because she's her own rights she's justice i mean she has her own you know so please clap for her issues that people cannot they take it to court and she makes rightful decisions judgments and that's a couple of us here so when we begin to interact with this we give them a kind of like mentorship because sometimes people don't even they want to say with this but when you begin to realize that this school that you will be privileged to attend has produced them. How did I get to this little one? My cousin, my cousin, okay, my mom's cousin. Say, if Auntie Betty is in that school, that is the school I want to attend. That is just that little influence and I got in, okay? Then that ship, and then also among ourselves, you know that level of let us come together see what we can do because remember we're talking about in the access because she has talked about it oh students children even the guest lecturer talks about the fact that the out of school student rate is getting higher and that more girls are affected and they expect other people want to be there and then again we talked about she had mentioned some of the problems the monitoring the inability to pay school fees and all that and i want to tell us that the old girl association in collaboration we uh, we discussed it with the uh the school management as we speak we have instituted what we call the project keep a girl in school 
The project Keep a Girl in School is there is an account that is dedicated. Um, we have asked people put money in that account so that no girl leaves the school because she cannot meet up with the financial obligations. That we have started. Principal, can you bear me with this? Have we started? Thank you. So, we have already done that. And I know that for us, please let's clap ourselves. Because different sets have picked one project after the other, you know, becoming involved in the things about the school. Those who just say, um, ACMGS, I, I went to ACMGS and leave it like that. Be interested. Partner with the school. What are the things that they need? Because one of the things is that whatever you have to give, you must look at the needs of the people. I mean, educational things and all that. So, thank you very much, Prof. Thank you. I know if we leave you, you will keep going on. And we have thank to work you very into time. All right, God Let's bless. get to our next question. Um, which our dear lady, Mrs. Briggs, it will be handling. Thank you very much. Yes, for funding partnership focused on supporting secondary education. For this wonderful. And by the grace of God, we have just had a lecture on the topic Impacts of the Girl Child Education in Community Development. As we all know, as you are celebrating, you are also in the season of the celebration of the International Day of Invest in Girls' Rights, our leadership, and our well-being. So this topic is overemphasized. The speaker, the guest speaker, did marvelous work on it and highlighted the benefits of training the girl child, some of which which include reduction of mortality rates, improvement of public health, reduction of poverty, and the rest. And now we are looking at this topic in diverse you know, levels. But before I continue, I want to wish you happy 80th anniversary celebration. As a panel, we are expected to dissect what has been you know, discussed. My responsibility here is to look at the funding partnerships. So I will go straight to looking at it, even though most of the points have been stated. In funding, we actually mean getting the resources required to ensure that the girl child is educated. How do we achieve that? Of course, we will work with partners. We will collaborate with partners, partners that fund projects, international organizations like UNICEF, and several other NGOs like the one we have. Collaborating with NGOs, we are sure to ensure that you no know, funding will be raised for the girl child education. We are not leaving out philanthropists, individuals who have love for education. They are also part of this arrangement and as we partner with them, we will be able to achieve to we say and what is you know achievable. There are so many theories and so many policies that are not workable and achievable. But at our level as Old Girls Association, what are the practical things that we should do to promote the girl-child education, knowing the value when a girl-child is educated? A nation is actually educated. So practically, we can go into partnering with any of these funding agencies. Government itself is a funding agency we also have homes can also support in the funding, and then we have, you know, 
organizations and um, in more girl schools are you know established and then secondly we can also you know support by providing facilities in existing girl child schools like building more hostels providing equipment like science equipment and other necessaries that will help to promote you know the girl child education now besides these two we can also subsidize you know education materials for instance the textbooks as old girls we can indeed print textbooks uh, sorry exercise books and also you know subsidize the purchase of textbooks that will be required fall out out of lack of funds to and other necessaries you know what we are highlighting here is subsidizing the cost of it then besides this we can as well put ourselves together to award scholarships scholarships to indigent students i'm sure that is already being done is a very powerful tool of ensuring that uh, girl children or girls are retained in schools i know abloma girls um, federal government college abloma has a very strong you know um, very strong uh, uh, arrangements in this direction i know people who contribute money every month towards the beginning of a new uh, school season to pay school fees and also buy provisions and uniforms for indigent students. Now, apart from this, we can, as old girls, also, you know, uh, mentor. Also, you know, uh, mentor. Mentor some indigent students. Mentor them. So if we put all of these together, we will actually be, you know, doing much to, in the line of funding, to Thank support you. the girl child. Thank you very much. Thank now you. we have an applause. In fact, I can affirm to the fact that what our national president said about his little one girls and others is really true. Because you see, a lot of the things she has highlighted is what a little one girls group is already doing. Various sets. You will see people dropping computers, sending in exercise books, stools in the, in the uh, laboratories, several things. Our grown up some amount for students. Principal, that's true. Correct. We are at it. So, we are an example. Frankly, we are. I think we've had a wonderful time in this discussion. And I think that whatever you need to take from it, take from it and grow thereby. If you don't belong to this little one girls group, whichever you need to pick, pick. And those that are of a little one girls, there are things you can key into and get better at in contributing to making this alumina grow extensively. Do we have any questions? Just one is all we can take. Yes, ma'am. National President and all other protocols observed. My name is Ibe Nispif, a retired professor of organic chemistry. And like I said, this celebration is all about celebrating my own HF SS2 from SS2 so that I can sponsor her to SS3 and pay her Wayek fees. Thank you very much. That wasn't a question. That was a direct reaction, you know, to our discussions here. Somebody is already getting practical. And we would expect that more of us will keep getting practical. Because what do we intend to do after this celebration? Get better than what we are already. God bless us all. Yes, you can. <laughs> we are done. For the 
interest of our guests here today we want to proudly proudly beat our chest to tell us that ACMGS has had the seat of First Lady of River State twice. We're holding it now. We had it four years ago. That terminated eight years, sorry. We had it eight years ago. That terminated when? May 29th is right here with us. Right here with us is one of our own. I can remember her behavior when we were in school. Her Excellency on TV. The last time I saw her and I got close to her was when I was a student of the library and pass. After that, many years later, when her husband was the chief of staff of Gome House, I was looking for a way to do my conversion. And I went to her office. When I got there, they said she is about to review a book. It's one of the justice book that day. And she was, she's going for book review. As that is his, his, her secretary was saying so. And I told him, I said, don't worry. There is a name I will write down for who she is. If she sees that my paper, she will usher me in. The thing that were there, they stood them down. And she said, bring her in. Oh, I was spreading like virus. For what in now? ACM just brought out, you won't play with us. And I went into her and came to me to hug me. Now for a long time now, she has not come in contact with any ACM just old girl. And she told me, I would have gone for this book lecture. I have a book, I mean book review to do. The, the program is ongoing. But because I saw ACM, because with her, Ma, I want to tell you that that thing I just saw her is either TV or newspaper or from a fire in a program. But here today, I'm with you one on one. Oh my God. I bet one and all hug me after she don't hug me. So you know go clean the hugging. I want to be her excellency. I bet Ma, you will bless me and just hug me and bless forever. I went to interview a girl in the school and she said, I'm proud to say that ACMJS has produced two, a wife of two governors of River State. She mentioned it too. And she said, as you are looking at me, I am the next wife of the governor of the state. So it's my privilege to tell us that the present governor of River State, some black beauty, the black god of River State, Lady Valerie Ch uh, Fumara, I want to call her Lady uh, Jaja, is still allowed. Valerie Jaja Fumara is also a product of ACMGS. If she's here today, we are the punisher because she's my junior. Thank you very much. All right, we have an award now to present and it's my honor to call job two which is named after her justice a very genius some weekend is there broadly written in honor of her sacrifice to the growth and development of this young just let's put our hands together for our own That we want to appreciate you, Not, and that makes us very happy. This is a special award. And we want to present this. All right. God bless you. Yes, you are an old girl. We appreciate you. God bless you. Thank 
you to the chairman of the occasion, Professor Amal of the school. He told me, <laughs> help me. And I see you, thank you for coming. I bring you the warm greetings of one of the past principals of ACMGS, Mrs. Patience Hospolobuzo, my mother. She actually came into the school the year I was graduating in her at this moment, doing their physiotherapy session. So that's why she's not here. But she promises to be here at other occasions, and I'm sure she'll be able to make it. I don't see Auntie Hannah Aguma. I didn't see her. I would have gone to greet her. Because I was with her last night, and we plan to meet here. But um, that's one occasion. I am Ross Wallace. And when you think about our physiological presentation as women, we see that we have a lot of influence, and I'm not giving another lecture. I just want to just say something to encourage all the next generation and gener think about breastfeeding, which only women can do, just like carrying children. You see that the mother-child contact starts, well, continues from there. Because even as a pregnant woman, you can speak to your children. Do we know that? Yeah. We can read poems and read stories much more than the father. So you see that the woman is, that says, God could not be everywhere, and that's why he made mothers. So that tells, but we have young girls in the audience that are also mothers to be. Think about yourself and all the great things God can use you for. And I'm happy that you're in this institution because I don't know where else. Well, there are other schools now that teach both morality, teach the Bible, and being a good Christian, having a good walk with the Lord, as well as being an excellent student. So you're in a very good place. I want to encourage you to use this opportunity to be the best that you can be. Being the wife of the governor is not the ultimate. Yes, I was thinking I was going to be coming with the news that we have a new wife of the governor that's also a member. Very good job of presenting a new wife of the governor. But we can aspire to greater. Why can't we be the governors ourselves? I don't see why not. I don't see why not. And we can do even much more. We have professors amongst us. We have doctors, judges. We have lawyers, engineers. Why can't we be the governor ourselves? So we're looking for the day when we will say, indeed, an old girl of the ACMGS has become a governor of River State. I know that that will certainly not be me, because I'm not a politician. I don't intend to be one. Come out of ACMGS. Just let's keep the flag flying. Believe in the God that has made our destinies to come together and we have met and also in our motto fidelis in minimis faithfulness in little things don't forget that i thank you all for this honor god bless you god bless you thank you again thank you my excellency my prayer points have changed i will not pray to be wife of governor again i will be governor of river states all right, please quickly, I want to recognize the presence of the old boys, the National Esco of the old boys of Baptist High School that are here with us. They love us so much, so, so much. Despite their tight shadow, they still make their way to come and celebrate with us. Thank you. we take our vote of thanks we'll be doing justice to our able panelists are we ready
I want to tell us one story that is common with women. The moment we hear that our husband is, a, is in a shopping mall going to shop for items. This is Ijama. This is Ijama. Bonani will please. Of ACMJ's old girls, I make this presentation to you. Professor Kunle Olu, our national. My prof, on behalf of SMGS All Girls Association, I made this presentation to you. And okay, daughter, on behalf of SM. Thank you very much. All right, I was telling us this story before this section. You know, women, there is this peculiar thing about us. Your Excellency can con confirm that. That when you give men in the house, hear me and hear me well. There are different worship songs that is being offered by our wife when we give them certain amount of money. You and I, darling. You are my everything. When she receives a lot of five million, you will hear Ima Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Oh your name be praised. When she sees twenty million, you go here. The voice to even sing the Beniza. The man should know that it's the money he gave her that she sing. Okwa gisi ne dadi anokwa makagi o kamke toke ni mege me mona change. When a woman hears that her husband, honey, the next thing you will hear, honey, shop for me, please shop for me. Whatever you shop, the man will say, wait, I have nothing. No, 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 whatever you shop, you shop for me. By the time the man tells her, beep, beep, the line is off. And I'm sure some day CMGS, the moment the principal just do green, green to her excellency, she will just go to her husband early morning. Before he will come that time, before he will come and attend to River State, Wahala, she will tell him, molded, designed, and refined. And when, you know, when our Excellency there, when he hears that, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. I'm going to refine you. I will make it for you. You see, nice and yes, you don't put yourself. Oh, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. I will do it. It's a small day. And that is how it's together for her. We have. Thank you very much. We have a representative of um, the Education Commissioner for Education. Please. We are just asking for one or two good sense to represent. Goodwill message. Good afternoon, wonderful ladies, present excellency, Prince G of four, and currently the national president of the great Baptist High School. You lay out for Harcourt. 
our history because of work schedule most of them couldn't attend or show their presence here because people chose Wednesday a midweek service for this great outing I managed to show respect because my immediate younger sister Estate Jofo and her school mother <laughs> and my darling Mrs. Dr. Sotoy Dombraye is here to attest to that fact. Because of her, I have never ceased to function in anything concerning ACMGS. I wish you all a wonderful 80th anniversary. And uh, a topic point is a fact. I'm a, I'm a frank person. I don't pretend. You see, well, we're having a topic on the boiled child. So that if people have more of the wonderful young SMGs upcoming, my, my dear mothers, I can attest to this fact because when I was young, I used to be a knockout. That's it. So I want to believe we will make our speech, our symposium, we will address how the current young boys should leave the streets and become responsible gentlemen. Because uh, we will parade members, our members that are ambassadors of the boy child. And they cut across all fairs of life. They have been first in so many things. Like one of us happens to be the first vice chancellor in the UK. We've produced so many things. So I'm inviting you people, for those of you that can put good and for them to learn not to become dogs for politicians, learn not to become area godfathers and all wrong vices. So I beg of my wonderful sisters, aunts and mothers, retired professors here, let them try and see that they come under an umbrella and put up a right up for us. Thank you so very much. Secretary LOC and ATA, please come and do our vote of thanks. But you will confess that we had a beautiful time. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Omi, sisters, and everyone here. A warm and next and cherished afternoon to everyone here to propose a vote of thanks and acknowledge the contribution of those who worked so hard to make this 80th anniversary celebration lecture on the impact of the girl child education in community development a grand success. On behalf of myself, Aniti Lazarus Obo, Secretary to the ACMGS 80th Anniversary Local Organizing Committee, first of all, my sincere thanks goes to the Almighty to Her Excellency and all the dignitaries here present on behalf of the Old Girls, ACMGS Old Girls Association. I give a really heartfelt vote of thanks to our chief guest speaker, Dr. Nisochi Ofo, who, who spends her busiest time and definitely encouraging the girl child for an amazing future. All the speakers and 
discussants for adorning the occasion and sincerely giving their opinions today. I am super grateful to persons, corporate organizations who have spent their felicitations and support towards this event. My special thanks and appreciate the set and then to the principal, management, staff and students of our dear school. Thank you for supporting and keeping the spirit alive. To the coalition of old boys and girls of secondary schools in River State, thank you for coming to celebrate with us. And then to the local, local organizing committee members, we are saying a very big thank you for your hard work. And we, amen. Thank you. You can make that announcement. We'll be let's, let's rise up to pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the, the Lord. Let the people attitude of gratitude to say thank you. Thank you for everything from the beginning of this program till this very hour. We give you alone all the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, thank you for your, all the students and the, the, both the, the old and the present ones. Lord God Almighty, we pray that you will continue to send help to us and help us to do only that that will please you in Jesus' name. Amen. We ask, O oh God Almighty, that you help us, O oh God, spread to spread our wings, O oh God, all around the nation and even the nations in Jesus' name. Thank you, our Father, for everything you have done. We worship and adore you, O oh God. Blessed be your name forever. We still commit the rest of the program tomorrow and till Thursday, Sunday into your... Thank you, Father, it well in advance, O oh God, for everything. Blessed be your name forever as we go to our different homes. We ask that you go ahead of us and take control. Amen. Amen. Please let's share the grace in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please don't be in a hurry to leave. Let's accord this honor to Her Excellency. She's going to take a group photograph with all the ambassadors right away. Can we please be seated and accord that honor to our excellency and the ambassadors our mommies who are here after the photograph we can make our way out of the hall please everybody on the height of yes mom the photograph with the ambassadors